First of all, I have to say this. I am biased towards this plane because I love it. It's exactly how I imagine overpowered planes. It's a fighter, it's a bomber, it can fly without wings. Okay, maybe it cannot fly without wings, but Yak-9B is a maneuverable fighter and a bomber at the same time, which in my opinion is already too much. But now you might ask a reasonable question. Hey, how to play, there are a lot of fighters that can carry bombs. Why all this excitement about this one? Well, when I said that the plane is a fighter and a bomber at the same time, I wasn't speaking about some uh, let's put the bombs under the wings, fix them in place with a tape. No, I am talking about a plane that is engineered to carry bombs inside the fuselage right behind the pilot and can release them one by one like majority of dedicated bombers. This gives Yak-9B few advantages. First of all, since all bombs can be released separately, you can attack opponents twice more often than those fighters that drop bombs in pairs, despite carrying the same amount of them. That results in potentially more frags, since you will be able to do up to 4 bombing attacks before returning to airfield. Additionally, your attacks are more accurate since the bomb bay is at the middle of the aircraft and not a couple of meters to the left and right from where you are aiming, like it happens when bombs are stored under the wings. Aerodynamics also remains quite good. There is no additional drag created by the bombs and hard points that hold them fixed under the wings even after all load is dropped. Yak-9B just closes the bomb bay doors like nothing happened and continues to be a regular fighter without any additional mechanisms sticking out and decreasing performance. Additionally, plane's roll speed doesn't suffer so much when carrying all these bombs since their weight is located close to the plane's roll axis and not somewhere further away on wings. Of course, there is a downside as well. Since all bombs are stored inside the fuselage, you cannot carry anything bigger than the fuselage itself. All available loadout options contain a various amount of 100 kg bombs, which don't have that much explosive to destroy multiple tanks when attacking a big groups of them or even a guaranteed destruction of only one vehicle. But, considering that fighter's maneuverability allows you to get very close to your target, you can drop bombs from the middle of the fuselage more accurately and consume only one bomb per attack, Yak-9B becomes quite efficient at destroying ground targets, even despite relatively small bomb size. I guess Soviets tried to fix that by placing the bombs under the glass, like in a greenhouse, Though, I have reasonable suspicions that agricultural methods cannot be used to grow bombs. On average, if I was allowed to fly freely around the battlefield, I was able to make at least a couple of frags with bombs. It all depends if you have the opportunity to carefully approach a target without interference from SPAAs or planes, since rushing to release bombs will result in missing a target by a meter or two, and that's enough for more armored opponents to be outside of 100 kg bombs' destruction radius. By the way, do you know why Soviet planes are releasing bombs? Because they are imprisoned. Yak-9B has two forward-facing weapons, one high-caliber machine gun and one 20mm autocannon. They provide 2 kg one second burst mass. That's relatively small firepower compared to some other fighters of the same battle rating in other nations. Not significantly, but noticeably. Same goes for the amount of ammunition. You will run out of ammo faster than other planes, especially if your accuracy is as bad as mine. On a scale of 1 to 10, it's around minus 7. With all the rounds the plane has, most of the time I was able to destroy at least a couple of planes, though when it comes to ground targets, I was mainly targeting trucks or at least open top tanks. Otherwise, ammunition usage is very inefficient, since explosive rounds that are present in every available bell type would be wasted and I would probably end up doing some critical hits but having no ammo to continue fighting. By the way, do you know what a cannon is called when you have no ammunition left? Can-off? 
On a good note, both cannon and machine gun are placed at the center of the aircraft, so all your projectiles will be concentrated in small area. Which makes this plane's fire more effective than wing-mounted machine guns, since their bullets fly meters apart from each other. Yak-9B is relatively maneuverable, for a plane that carries bombs at least. In most cases, you should be able to get an opponent's tail if they carry heavier load and dedicated bombers have no chances at all. Though it doesn't mean that you can feel superior in the sky. There will be some fighters who can outmaneuver Yak-9B, though such fighters don't carry any bombs or rockets, so they are not so popular in realistic ground battles. Yak-9B is quite fragile fighter, it has very little protection. A bulletproof glass and 8mm plate behind the pilot cannot stop a 50 cal projectile, so every stray bullet from American tank's machine gun can knock out the pilot. It's already risky to follow a plane with a tail gunner, I'm not even talking about attacking fighters head on. I mean, look at the tail of this plane, it already has holes. That can't be a good sign. Unprotected multiple fuel tanks burn often, but at the same time they are self-sealing, so there is a good chance that the fire will stop before it deals significant damage to the airframe. By the way, do you remember in the beginning of the video I said that the plane cannot fly without wings? Well, I wasn't completely honest. It cannot fly without wings, but it can fly without one wing. If you lose a wing for any reason, because SPAA on the red team was very unfriendly towards you, or because someone doesn't know how to avoid stationary objects, this is my case, but you will still be able to fly this plane to the airfield or even bomb targets and dogfight, but very, very ineffectively. Damaged plane doesn't always fly in the direction you want, there is a risk of it flipping over and crashing, but it is still flyable. Losing a bit of a wing doesn't mean that you can't fight anymore. Unless you lose the wing and engine at the same time, then it might become more complicated because engine seems to be more important part of this plane than wings. Yak-9B is great for realistic ground battles. It combines both maneuverability and ability to bomb opponent's ground units. And what's very important, do it well since there are many fighters that can carry bombs, but not so many can use those bombs so efficiently, while at the same time plane is capable to win dogfights against other planes that might try to prevent you from bombing their allies. I would rate Yak-9B 8 holes out of 10. I would use it in ground realistic battles when I need to bomb up to 4 opponents, while at the same time maintaining a reasonable enough agility to fight off planes even without a wink sometimes.